You won't believe it, but the same day I did the base module 700, I was given a base module 500. Little baby brother version. Uh, this one actually does have a power button on it. Guess we should plug it in, right? Let's have a look. Not that side. Not that side. Not that side. How do you plug it in? Okay, this one's underneath. Just right there. <laughs> and there's an input socket by the look of it. Does this thing held together the same way as the uh, as the other one? We've got rubber feet. Uh, might be screws under them. Don't know. Oh, I can feel the hole there. Um, and there. Someone's already taken these screws out. There's no other ones there. So let's take those out. And if it doesn't come off, we're going to have to peel these. But before I do, let's plug it in this time and see what happens. I haven't had any information on it, so I don't know if it just doesn't work or, or what. Does the button work? Okay, so we have a totally dead scenario. Now, because we plugged it in, you have to be aware of charged up capacitors. Remember the last one? Okay, let's see, can we get into this? Basically the same kind of sticker too. I wonder what came first, the 500 or the 700? And it's all stuck together. We'll get these feet off. For some reason there was two screws in the bottom, well not the bottom, but in the uh, rear or front. It would be the front wouldn't it? Two of them had two screws. And what are we going to have attached there? Okay, so there is a bit of a cable in the back. It goes to our power cable. Here we are. Uh, we're going to want to be able to power it up. Um, out of the box. I could probably leave that there for now and we'll just sit it in the tray when we need to test it perhaps. But otherwise, you know, you could always unscrew this here and just have a free floating. So what's holding it down? Well, a few big screws here and there. Remember, we don't know what's charged up yet. Uh, we've got a Wi-Fi module here and speaker here. Looks like our high voltage stuff might be under this plate. It was held down by the screws, but it is coming up loose now. So we'll just gently lift that off. Um, it's insulated underneath, uh, but we would not want uh, to have it slip and, you know, go across the board with its metal edges. Let's check that we have a discharged capacitor. Here, this is a very similar, it's like a miniaturized version of the uh, the other one. We've got our high voltage section. There's a cap, what looks like two pins of a large capacitor there. Um, and the trace going in, this, in the center of the board or on the other side, but it's dark, but it's not on this side. So uh, anyway, let's just check there and there. It's down to 14 volts, so we're all okay. Oh yeah, it's coming up. We'll disconnect the speaker and flip it over. So with it lifted up nice and gently, we can see that the flexes here, there's two of them. So we want to, oh, they just pull out. So we'll just pull that one out to the Wi-Fi module and the one beside it. Not sure where that goes yet, but that just pulls out as well. Here we go. It goes off toward, okay, so that's our power button, that other flex. Nice little layout, another shield over the power supply section on this side. Uh, this is our uh, output capacitors. Um, this is pretty class D. Um, there's always a capacitors and inductors involved. That'll be our amplifier chip um, and our sub connection and our mains input over here. So that looks like a similar circuit, doesn't it? That looks like a similar IC to the one that was 
uh, in the other model. But we don't know yet for sure. Alright, let's take this off. Now, this is our main switching transformer, and it appears there is only one in this design. And it's quite possibly all controlled by that IC, which, as we discussed previously, needs its own rail to function. Um, it looks like it's taking directly off this cap. It doesn't seem to have its own... Uh, smaller 400 volt capacitor these are 35 volt so that's what you could expect what 25 on the output perhaps or something there's probably a plus or minus rail going on there um do we plug it in and measure around some voltages perhaps see if we've got anything on these caps here i would say if we did it would probably work but you could very well have secondary rails and be brain dead, for example. Um, possibly a rectifier diode pack. Um, possibly a switching MOSFETs there. And um, it's our bridge rectifier. Let's see if we have anything on the secondary. What I was looking at is this package here. And I'll probe from uh, either pin to the center pin, either out of outside pin to the center pin. Um, if it is a twin diode pack, it'll be anode here and here, I think, and then cathode here. So positive on the outer pins um, and negative on the center pin. Now, yeah, point 0.3 and the other pin to the center, point 0.3. So... Pretty confident that's going to be our rectifier diode. That's only showing short. I'm measuring across the two outside pins, but that's across the winding of the transformer. So you're measuring the transformer resistance. Don't get caught out with things like that. It's not necessarily a short. Now I've checked that this um, silver trace is tied to secondary ground. So we can take voltage measurements using that as our negative. Let's see if we have anything coming off our secondary. Oh dear, look at that, 27. 27 volts. Well, that's good. That means our power supply is working, but it's not good. Because that means that our power supply is working. <laughs> and we have to troubleshoot deeper into the brains of it all. So, having a look... At the this is the connector that goes to our power button and it should have like three volts on one of the pins which usually that'll get um, pulled low by the power button to tell it to turn on so let's just probe across each of the pins and I'll just read out the voltage I'm getting there nothing on there very gradual climb on that one. Very, very gradual. It gets to about 0.6 and dies off. This one is doing the same. That one is nothing. There's some over the back. Nothing. Two volts. Okay, I'll show you what that's doing in a moment because that doesn't sound right to me. So this is where the little bar graph can be handy because it shows very uh, fine divisions like like millivolts or something. All right, as a scale, so if I probe on that one there, there's our there's two point, almost two point two, but you can see the finer scale as well as the the larger numbers, but it's darting up and down. Something is stopping it from coming up to full voltage, which I think should be probably 3 volts. Most things with a, a soft turn on are 3 volts. Laptops, your mobile phone, although some might be 1.8. But yeah, it doesn't look good. It should be a nice steady voltage. 
might just probe around the uh, processor, check a couple of capacitors, nothing on there, nothing on, well it's sort of, oh, kind of nothing there, what have we got on this little, looks like a lin linear regulator perhaps, that's kind of fluctuating as well, what have we got over here, there's a diode there, Nothing on each side of that diode. Oh, no, no. My cap there. Ah, 27. Okay, so our 27 comes in here. I bet this is a switching regulator for the, the three, three volts that the system runs on. And I bet that's not starting up. What have we got here? Nothing. Another little possible linear regulator. Nothing, and nothing. I have a lot of glue, I can't really probe under that glue. Probably need to peel off a lot of this glue next, so we can do some more measurements and figure out. Now that we've got the glue out of the way, do we have any uh, shorts around the area? Ah, that was too easy, wasn't it? So here's the diode that we expected a rail to be generated from and we found that um, right off the bat there's a short on that side and it's ground on that side. Let's check, so this is ground on the capacitor and this is a short. Okay, so we have a short on our, what I'm guessing is our main rail here. Um, if I had to guess further, it's probably one of these surface mount ceramics, just because they do go short. Um, let's probe uh, diode mode on that diode. Just out of curiosity, is it that way? And what do we get? So we're getting a shorted diode as well. We'll have a closer look around and try and make sense of how this works. So here's the diode in question, I measured a short on both sides uh, of that and there's a little little IC down there, um, but I thought that might be the switching IC, but now I don't think it is. We have the output of the inductor, or one side of the inductor, to this device, which could very well be a switching control IC. Uh, it doesn't need to make huge amount of current, I don't think. And the other side tied to this diode. Yeah, okay, so that's tied to ground. So that should be a short. I say we take the diode off and check it. It's probably going to be a lot faster. And, you know, experience says... <laughs> Um, let's get rid of the diode. We're going to fire the air away from those uh, two caps there, even though they are going to feel some of it. We'll give it a fighting chance and we'll just um, add some fresh solder to there as well. Just so that it doesn't take quite so much heat. It is. All right. Another failed diode. And uh, with that removed, do we have a short on our uh, line again? No, we don't. That is, because that's ground. No, and no. Here we go. It was a diode all along. I don't think these diodes can handle the base. A little vibration. And she's all done. B34034. Okay, let's see. I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, fine to use the same diode that we used previously. Um, I will just have a look at the data sheet on that one. B340A. So, B340A data sheet. And what do we get? 
One. Oh, look at that. Apparently it's a 3 amp diode. Really? Oh. Surely it's not pulling anywhere near 3 amps. 340A. Peak reverse voltage, 40 volts. 3 amp. Rectified output current with a 100 amp peak surge current. Uh, okay, well my other one was a 2 amp diode, wasn't it? I don't know if I've got anything bigger. Let's go with our 2 amp diode. If it comes back, it comes back. I don't think it will, at least not in any significant amount of time. Get rid of that one. Clean it up. Same process as before, virtually. Pop some flux down, pop a blob of solder on there, pop a diode in there. Now this one's a bit different, you can see that they've drawn a rectangle around the diode um, with a thicker line at one end representing the cathode. So. If you're like me and didn't pay attention to what way that just came off, <laughs> never mind, you can figure it out. just like that it will probably work why don't I check that to start with huh pulled all that glue off for no reason oh well guess I could blob a little bit back in there Where, where's my glue there's some glue That'll stop those critters wiggling. Okay, now let's test on the end of that diode. Plug it in. Ah, 3.67, 3.7. Well, that sounds better, doesn't it? And what have we got on that standby pin? That, that power pin, I should say. Which is that one there. Oh, that one's now got 1.6 on it. Well, it's not 2, it's 1.6, and it's still fluctuating a bit. But hey, I don't know what this thing should be. Ah, 3.2, we didn't have that last time. You totally couldn't see that. Can you see that? Look, 3.2. Right, that's pin 1, I think. It's got a little triangle mark beside it. So pin 1 on the power connector, power button connector, should be 3.2. If you're trying to fault find yours, use that for the reference. Right, big moment. There's our light. And let's plug it in. Oh, isn't it glorious? The glorious yellow light. Or oh, orange. I'm not judging. And the same blinking pattern. So I wonder what happens if you push the button. Oh, it kind of stops. What if I hold it down? Nothing. Push it once again. It's like a reset, isn't it? Well, that's a fix. Nice, easy, quick one. Really interesting to know that it's the same failure mode as the uh, Big Brother. But hey, I'm sure you'll be able to fix your one now. Glad I could help. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.